Hey there, folks. So at this point, I have posted my first um, battle as part of my Little Cup PGL competition journal, log, whatever. Um, so I decided that I'm going to go back and give you guys a little presentation on my team in depth to kind of give you an idea of what the team is and strategies and stuff. So let's go into it. Uh, at a glance, these are, these are the six Pokemon I'm using on my team. I've got a Surskit, an Inky, a Sneasel, a Tangela, a Murkrow, and a Magnemite. Three of these Pokemon are LC Uber. Um, I'm not going to make any apologies for having a team that can actually be competitive in this crazy, stupid metagame. You know, you ban Eviolate, but you don't ban Sneasel. It's kind of ridiculous. And can we talk for a second about how, you know, Scyther is not nearly as broken as Sneasel? Like, Sneasel is insane. Scyther is good. I'm not going to tell you Scyther is bad, but Scyther is nothing compared to Sneasel. Man, Sneasel just do dominates the entire metagame, and if you don't believe me, check out the link in the description description to a stats thread that I put on Smogon, you know, literally Sneasel is like 80% usage, and um, at least on good teams. So anyway, let's go ahead and look at these Pokemon one by one in a little bit greater detail. We have the lead, Keats. You've seen this exact Surskit before, if you've seen my older um, Auras, not Auras, excuse me, X and Y uh, Little Cup battles, uh, its primary and its primary role is to set up the sticky web, but this one functions really as kind of a an anti anti lead, as it were. Um, so I've got the protect there to foil fake out users. So fake out users are pretty rampant, um, namely Sneasel, and uh, protect is there to guarantee that uh, that Surskit can get off one move before getting KO'd, even against a faster opponent. Um, so the moves are Sticky Web, Protect, Hydro Pump, and Signal Beam. Again, I went over Protect. Sticky Web is great for getting rid of those annoying, obnoxious speed ties, which are everywhere in this stupid metagame, because everyone's using the same, like, three or four Pokemon. Um, so, and, you know, Little Cup is also known for its speed ties as it is, so it's just nice to be able to break those things and get a little bit faster. Um, and Sticky Web is more permanent than, say, Tailwind. Um... So, uh, Hydro Pump is there for maximum damage, Signal Beam is additional stab. Also, it turns out that Signal Beam uh, will one-hit KO Sneasel with a max damage roll, although most lead Sneasels are uh, Focus Sash anyway. Um, so it's not about KOing the Sneasel, it's about getting it down to a range where I can easily revenge kill with a um, with an Ice Shard from my own Sneasel. So, um, right, so the deal is, against a lead Sneasel, I usually don't go for the sticky web, I usually go for the signal beam instead because it's much more important to kill a Sneasel than it is to just to have a sticky web up. The heart of my team is I, my Inky. This is not the same Inky that you've seen before, this is actually its quote unquote sister. Um, I rebred so that I could have Switcheroo on the set so I could have a scarf set. Uh, honestly, in a competitive match I will probably leave Inky at home. Uh, there aren't too many competitive situations where I'd want to bring Inky, but against a weaker opponent, someone who's like using a starters team, I will I might consider bringing Inky just to add some variation. And certainly, you know, it's the cutest little cup Pokemon in the entire world, which means it's the cutest Pokemon in the entire world. And I just I couldn't leave it at home. And Choice Scarf, I wasn't using Choice Scarf or anything else. It's not like it's losing me an item. Um, and you're like, well, like, oh, but Andrew, then you could have put like say uh, Swirlix on your team. It's like. Swirlix. I'm sorry. Swirlix. Um, let's get down to business here. This is the core of the team. Luray, uh, starting with Luray, my Sneasel. Um, I'm running Life Orb, not Focus Ash, partially because I use my Focus Ash, but that's not really the reason. I wanted the maximum amount of power. I was actually running Adamant for a while, but that made it too dependent on me having Sticky Web up. Also, that's not even true because the primary reason you run uh, Jolly is to outspeed uh, all Scythers um, and you know lots of other Pokemon. You, by going Jolly, you outspeed them. So crazy high speed, crazy high attack, crazy uh, decent HP actually. Uh, Sneasel is just ridiculously powerful. Um, you know, I don't really need to explain much. Brick Break over um, over Low Kick. I don't know that the additional damage really helps me out, um, but I, I find it useful. Um, yeah, so, anyway, now I have Kudzulu, my Tangela, who is my wall. Uh, timid nature for maximum speed. Uh, the EVs are a little bit strange 
if you know Tangle of Builds, unless you realize that this is actually a Hidden Power Fire Ivy set. So I'm not using Hidden Power Fire because I'm not running Chlorophyll. Although I did breed a Chlorophyll a Tangela, I just decided not to use it because um, I wasn't running a Sun team. Sun is common, but not super common, and just trying to... I just Regenerator is the more useful ability to me. Um, I'm the my build is actually for maximum uh, bulk after I take care of speed uh, and the idea is you want to be tanking hits the item is a Koba Berry which weakens super effective uh, flying type attacks uh, that's mainly for Scyther uh, it's actually really funny to see like a Scyther or something be like ah, I could take out this uh, Tangle in one hit uses uh, Aerial Ace and survives uh, and then either and then Tangle just one hit KOs with Ancient Power which is 4x effective um, Yanma usually doesn't go for Air Slash usually goes for Bug Buzz in which case I'm dead I did have the Tangle Berry for a while on, while I was playing with this um, Tangle Berry weakens super effective Bug type moves but in the end um, I decided that Koba was the better item. Alright, the jerk of my team. Devil in the shortwave, Nick, uh, short, uh, shortened into D-I-T-S. Um, if you're, so the, the na name I could get into, it's a, uh, but never mind, I'm not going to do that right now. So this is a complete whole set of, for me to be using, but whatever. Uh, so it's Prankster. I'm not running, I'm not running, uh, whatchamacallit, uh, Swagger. I'm not running Swagger, so give me some credit there. Um, but it is Thunder Wave Substitute Roost. So what that basically means is with the Bright Powder, what you do is you go for a T-Wave, um, you hope you can survive the first hit, um, or, or that it misses, and then you just go for subs until, um, they miss or get paralyzed, and that's pretty darn common, like the chance of paralysis is 1 in 4, the chance of miss for a 100% accurate move is I think like, I can't remember if it's 1 in 5 or 1 in 10, but the point is, the uh, the, the, the odds add up, and so um, if the hex gods are in my favor as they were in that last battle, you can really annoy the hell out of your opponent by using this set. Um, and yeah, it's lame that I'm using Bright Powder, and it's lame that I'm doing uh, a, such a hack based set anyway, but whatever. Okay, so let me go into the EV spread a little bit more, because this is not your standard EV spread. Most uh, most Murkrows in this metagame have been running hasty uh, max speed. Um, the thing about that is I just didn't really see that being particularly useful. I'm running a decent amount of speed EVs to outrun a lot of notable threats, but I have a lot invested here in defense. The reason, and uh, my nature is also impish. So the reason for that is that with the jolly non-life orb ice shard, um, has a decent chance of one hit KOing standard Murkrow, and if you, if the, um, Sneasel's running life orb, it's a guaranteed KO. On the other hand, with this set, um, my opponent is forced to go for Icicle Crash to get the one-hit KO. Max damage is required to take out this build um, with Ice Shard Life Orb. Otherwise, uh, non light Life Orb maxes out at 18 out of 23 HP um, damage. So this thing is actually decent against Sneasel, and the idea is you want to cripple that Sneasel with a T-Wave, and then it's... It's still pretty scary and threatening, but it's nowhere near as scary and threatening. Like, a lot of the reason that Sneasel is so deadly in this metagame, as opposed to, say, Scyther, is its speed. It outruns literally everything in the metagame. So, by crippling its speed, you've really crippled the Pokémon. Lastly, this is a late addition to the, my team. I had Longclaw, my Honage, on this team for quite some time in testing, but Honage just really isn't cut out for the competitive aspects of this metagame. Um, and so instead I have Heterodyne, a Magnemite. I, it's um, a pretty standard Recycle Berry Juice set. Um, recycle is actually not that useful of a move considering that Knock Off is everywhere. But um, the important thing here is that Flash Cannon will one-hit KO all Swirlix if it goes off before the Combine, and with the speed investments, it will outrun all but Timid max speed um, Swirlix, and very few run Timid max speed, and uh, the blah blah blah, uh, Timid max speed will be a speed tie anyway. So, uh, that's the team. Weaknesses. Number one is Fire. 
Uh, fire, this, Growlithe is actually pretty common in this metagame because it is such a good counter to Sneasel. Uh, Vulpix is also around, although not, I guess it's not quite as common, I think. Uh, you can check the stats. Um, but yeah, it's fire. I have, I think, three Pokemon on this team that are weak to fire and no Pokemon that resist it. So, you know, yeah, I can bring Keats for a super effective Hydro Pump, but uh, in the sun, it's not going to really do much. Um, and if I had Chlorophyll, then I could have a speedy Tangela, but still, I don't think even a, an Ancient Power is going to one-hit KO either of these Pokemon. Uh, other weakness, Sneasel in general, because Sneasel is ridiculously overpowered, but specifically Focus Sash Sneasel is really hard to work around. Uh, it's a huge, huge threat in the metagame, but there's really no way to... There's no, I think, one... I don't think there's really a 100% counter for Sneasel. I guess Swirlix is pretty good, but even so, a lot are running Poison Jab now. Eh. Uh, third on my bullet point, this is a recent addition from my last day of uh, practicing with this team. Freaking Remoraid. I mean, uh, Moody is such an annoying ability. Oh, it's so horrible. And just, it's... This is really just a stand-in for hacks. Uh, when you, we are dealing with three versus three hacks, it has way larger of an influence on the metagame than um, than has it has any right to. Uh, not that it has any right to them. You know, it just it just sucks. Hacks sucks. Let's just leave it there. Um, last threat would be Stealth Rocks. Uh, I have several Pokemon on my team for a week to Stealth Rocks, and um, I have a Pokemon with Sturdy. Uh, and berry juice, so and doesn't have endure in this generation. Uh, yeah, um, Magnemite could get endure, I believe, in Gen four, but can't get it in Gen six. So that sucks. Uh, but it means that basically, um, in the event of Stealth Rock being on the field, it ruins a lot of my strategies. And so that's my team. And I hope you folks found that illuminating. If I'd posted this maybe a week ago, maybe you guys could have actually taken some of these things and adapted them to your own LCPGL team. But, eh, I didn't want to share a trade secret. Also, I didn't decide on a lot of these things until the day of the competition. Uh, I swapped out the Koba Berry pretty re swapped out into the Koba Berry pretty recently. Um, yeah, and just, there were a few last minute changes that I did. So, anyway, that's the team I'm locked into for this competition. I hope you will enjoy watching this, uh, my going through this competition. So, yeah, so long, folks.